If the Saints are going to win this game against the New York Giants, they're going to have to do one thing very well. Stop the run. Can they stop Saquon Barkley from going crazy against them? Prevent Tommy DeVito from just running all over them because he does have the capabilities to do so. If the Saints get a win, they'll be 7-7 seven and seven and on top of the NFC South. We are going to be diving into all of that on today's episode of the Hoodats Pod. Let's dive into it. Welcome back to the Hoodats Pod, everyone. I'm Caden Janish, your host. Make sure while you're here, if you are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check me out on social media right there. If you haven't already, links are in the description. Before we dive into the Giants offense versus the Saints defense and the Saints offense versus the Giants defense, why don't we look at the injury report and just kind of give an update of kind of the injuries that's going on around the Saints. So for the Saints, only three players have been ruled out, but we'll dive into the third player. Isaiah Foskey and Kendra Miller have been ruled out. Chris Olave is questionable, as well as Ryan Ramchek and Jamal Williams. Those are three questionables. The third out player is Peyton Turner. And the reason he popped up on the injury report so late in the week, he was designated to return from injured reserve. That means he now has like a 21-day window to return. So they're hoping he's back sometime soon. Definitely not this game, Dennis Allen said, and probably not the Rams game due to it being a Thursday night football game. But over those final two weeks is probably a good opportunity for us to see him. And I do want to see him. I thought, I think he played what, like seven snaps against the Titans or something like that. And from those seven snaps, he actually looked really good. And just overall in his career, he just can't be on the field, which is so frustrating because when he has been on the field, he has looked like somewhat talented and the Saints are very thin at defensive end and edge rusher and they need Peyton turn to work out he just needs to find a way to be healthy and find a way to be on the field as for the Giants they have one guy listed as doubtful and that's tackle Evan Neal three guys are listed at questionable with Dexter Lawrence that's a pretty huge one with a hamstring injury Darren Waller is questionable he's coming off of injured reserve as well but I believe he is expected to play and we'll dive into that later on in the video and offensive lineman Justin Pugh who is a late addition to the Giants injury report is also questionable. So two two of their <laughs> offensive linemen, I believe starting offensive linemen are on the injury report. One of them is doubtful. That's tackle Evan Neal. And Justin Pugh, who's been a guard, I don't know if he's starting anymore, but he's definitely someone to keep an eye on. And maybe the Saints can take advantage of this because the Giants offensive line is already bad as it is. Now you're taking Evan Neal. I'm pretty sure he's known as a pretty good starter around the NFL, at least I believe I believe so and then Justin Pugh I don't know if he's starting I know he did start a game for the Giants earlier this season but either way the one that stood out to me the most is Dexter Lawrence but those two are also very um, critical I guess for both sides in terms of the Giants and the Saints now for injury updates for the Saints we already talked about Peyton Turner he had turf toe and two dislocated toes he's ahead of schedule in his recovery we already went over that he's back from injured reserve and hoping to be back after that Rams game as for Kendra Miller according to Nick Underhill he's expected to be back this season again that Rams game probably not due to it being a short week but he's expected to be back for the Tampa Bay game in the Atlanta game, bearing any setbacks in his recovery. Guys like Michael Thomas and Marcus May are expected to be back for the Falcons game. Thomas could, he's he's available to return after Sunday's game against the Giants, but due to the Rams being a short week, I don't see how he would play. And then the Fal- in the Buccaneers game might be too much. I know that one's probably up in the air, but the Falcons game is one both Marcus May and Michael Thomas are eyeing to return back. Marshawn Lattimore has a high ankle sprain those are four to six weeks he got injured week 10 so you add that math together and you add in recovery time and getting back in the groove of things i don't think we see marshawn Lattimore back on the field for the saints uh again this season so these injuries obviously are going to play a factor for the saints and the giants but something else that's going to play a huge factor for the saints and the giants is the coaching you got brian dable versus dennis allen I think we know which one's the mismatch here. I think the Giants have a huge advantage when it comes to coaching. Brian Dable took Daniel Jones in an offense 
just took a Giants team that had no talent really around it at all to the playoffs and won a playoff game on the road. While Dennis Allen has his quarterback, he assembled a really good roster, brought in his own coaches as in year two, has head coaching experience, learned from Sean Payton, has yet to have a winning season, and has the Saints at 6-7 and seven, with the weakest schedule in the NFL and has had somewhat of a healthy roster throughout most of the season. Now, this game might come down to who can coach their side of the ball better. Brian Dable, I believe, is an offensive, not mastermind, but he's who's an offensive coordinator, Dennis Allen, defensive-minded guy. Who's going to be better at coaching their side of the ball? And if I'm being honest, I think Brian Dable has that one. in Not in the bag, but I think Brian Dable is going to win that one. Let's talk about the Brian Dable's offense and how they've been with Tommy DeVito, their third string or originally was their third string quarterback. Now he's won over the fan base and in the locker room. Since Tommy DeVito has taken over, he started four games. They're averaging 18 points per game over those last four. But in the last three, I don't know if you want to count the Dallas Cowboys game because that's the one game they lost his first start, whatever you want to count. But in the last three games on this three game win streak, they're averaging 21.6 points per game. So not bad. I think that's about middle of the pack and this is an offense just like the saints that relies on the running back saquon barkley is their identity saquon is like everything to them he he if you take him out of the equation they don't have really much going for them and <laughs> the saints have to stop saquon barkley but can they probably not the saints have not been able to stop the run all season long they've just allowed 200 rushing yards to miles sanders chuba hubbard and bryce young so I don't see why they would not allow a big day from Saquon Barkley, one of the best running backs in the league when healthy. And Tommy DeVito, a guy who can somewhat use his legs. Maybe not like Josh Dobbs, but I could see him having a Tyson Bajan kind of game where he can run, can make plays with his legs, and whatever it may be. Saints haven't held a team to under 100 rushing yards since week five against the New England Patriots. They are just a bad run defense. They got rid of guys like David Onyemata and Shai Tuttle so that they could revamp the run defense and bring guys like Colin Saunders and Nathan Shepard in. And it might be worse than last season's run defense. I really don't know which one is worse, but it's bad. And then it doesn't help that your edge rushers aren't helping out doesn't help that your offense can't produce points and so now teams are running the ball more it just becomes a whole cycle and now the run defense is just not what it used to be you're relying on demario davis and pete warner and kim jordan to do everything it just it is a mess a mess that the saints cannot clean up right now because well we're at the end of the season and i don't think it will be cleaned up until they get new coaching staff until they find a new way to approach the defensive schemes and whatever it may be as for the Giants, they have the 14th best rushing offense. So not the best. I mean, it's like above average. But Carolina had the 21st best rushing offense. And they got 200 on the Saints last week. So it's going to be rough for the Saints. And I expect Saquon Barkley to have one or two really big runs. Like I'm talking 40 yards. I think he actually takes them to the house. I think Saquon Barkley is going to have a huge day. I think Tommy DeVito is going to have around like 60-ish, 70 rushing yards. I just don't think the Saints defense is capable of stopping the run. And now they're playing a team that has a lot of momentum on their side. They have a quarterback who can use his legs. They ran read option with them last week. They have a running back who, when healthy, is probably a top three, top five running back in the NFL. You could consider him a top 20 player in the NFL if everyone is healthy. So... Why would I expect anything to change from last week when they couldn't stop Hubbard and Sanders, who are probably towards the bottom of running back tiers, and now they're playing a top-tier running back? The only difference that I would say is that the Giants' offensive line is, might be worse than the Panthers' offensive line, but even then, they're still a better rushing offense than the Panthers, so I'm not expecting the Saints to get a stop, and I'm not expecting anything to change because we haven't seen any change all season. Saints are just going to keep doing what they're doing. It's going to be rough for them to stop Saquon in the running game. But something they kind of do have, do have going for them on their side a little bit is their pass coverage and pass defense versus running backs. When it comes to covering running backs, 
and yards and receptions, whatever it may be. The Saints are a top three defense when it comes to stopping running backs in the passing game. Saquon is used a decent amount in the Giants passing game. They like to use screens, get him involved in goal line situations. They like to do like that play action, like play action kind of thing. And then he just runs to the flat. The Giants like to use Saquon Barkley a lot in their passing game, especially when it comes to the red zone. He doesn't have a lot of yards, but they like to use him in, in close situations because he's that big of a playmaker. So when it comes to stopping running backs in the passing game, the Saints have allowed the least amount of receptions at 42. They are second in targets allowed right, right behind the Giants. Uh, they've allowed the le second least amount of passing yards to running backs at 282. And they're tied for the second best when it comes to touchdowns allowed by running backs in the passing game. They've allowed one. That was to Bijan Robinson when Dennis Allen decided to have Demario Davis matched up against Bijan Robinson. And if they can continue to have success there and stopping the running backs or stopping Saquon Barkley in the passing game, maybe you can become, maybe have more success in the passing game because now Tommy DeVito has to rely on guys like Darius Slayton, Wandale Robinson and possibly Darren Waller. I don't know if he's going to be playing. And I don't know, oh, Michael Hodgins, or I think that's his name. But those are, that receiver room doesn't scare me too much. But Wandale Robinson, over the past few weeks, has been someone who has kind of gotten a little momentum, got on a hot streak in a way. And the Giants have been using him quite uniquely. They've used him out of the backfield a few times that last week. They used Saquon Barkley out of the Wildcat, and then he handed it off to Wandale Robinson. And Wandale Robinson fits the prototype of a player who has success against the Saints. But the Saints secondary this season has not really lost, if that makes sense. I have not really thought, wow, the secondary got cooked. Debo got cooked. The Saints secondary sucks. I've not thought that a quarterback and a wide receiver have really dominated the Saints this season now. That's also due to the fact that they're not playing really any good quarterbacks or any like super elite tier wide receivers. But it's still impressive that they aren't really allowing too much from the receivers. It's the running game and the tight ends that have been beating up the Saints. But Wando Robinson, the last time the Saints played the Giants in, this, in 2021, which was also in the Superdome, uh, who was it? Kadarius Toney, very speedy guy, quick hips was able to beat the Saints pretty badly. Wandale Robinson kind of reminds me of that. He's someone in the slot who has quick hips, and I think he's someone Alante Taylor is going to have to have another pretty decent game. I thought he had a pretty good game last week against the Panthers. I think he's going to have to step it up once again. But Wandale Robinson does fit that like speedy, quick guy, yards after the catch prototype that the Saints have struggled with in the past when it comes to wide receivers. And I don't expect too much to change in terms of the Saints secondary. I do expect them to do their job, but Wando Robinson is someone you have to kind of keep an eye on. He's on a hot streak. He's coming off of his best game of the season, in my opinion. So the Saints are going to have to really make sure he doesn't get too much going for him because, man, he can be an explosive player. And I know I didn't have this podcast <clears throat> two years ago. But I was campaigning for the Saints to draft Wandale Robinson. I actually have a signed photo of him from college uh, on my desk. So I'm a little Wandale Robinson fan. I'm not going to I'm not gonna front. I'm not going to cap. But back to the main topic. I don't expect anything to change when it comes to the Saints covering receivers. I think they'll still do decently. But again, they have struggled a little bit when it comes to slot wide receivers. I also don't expect too much to change when the Saints covering tight ends they've struggled against tight ends all season yeah they were better last week but carolina doesn't have any tight ends worth covering so darren waller is a guy who if he plays he's he's a guy who's dominated the saints before what do you have against the saints in 2020 in that week 12 game or week two game wasn't it like 12 receptions 150 yards and two touchdowns the saints are not a good team right now when it comes to covering tight ends i think that's due to just a decrease in Demario Davis's play. I think his range and coverage has dropped, which is why the Saints are struggling against tight ends. I think Alante Taylor's first year in the slot also has a lot to do with that. I think Pete Warner has regressed a little bit. So a lot of those things are playing a factor. Tyron Matthews' age and size also doesn't help when covering tight ends. Marcus May, I think, has been okay when covering tight ends. But they don't really have someone of those group that would be like, immediately put him on Darren Waller. I think... 
I think Alante Taylor, if he's going to cover Darren Waller, he might have a little bit more success because Darren Waller isn't like a super shifty guy. He's just kind of like a stiff, long runner, runner, if that makes sense. But Darren Waller, Brian Dable is looking at that tape from the 2020 game and is like, we're going to get a whole bunch of bootlegs to Waller. We're going to attack the middle of the field. Then he's also looking at what's worked over the past with TJ Hawkinson, Cole Komet. And he's looking at that and saying, okay, how do we attack the Saints defense the same way? They attacked him. And I don't expect that to change either. I expect the Saints secondary to do good against the receivers. And I'm expecting the Giants run offense and Darren Waller to kind of have good games. Because that's kind of been the story of the Saints defense all season. Can't get past rush. Can't stop the run. Hard time covering tight ends. Good job covering receivers and not allowing really too many big plays. Now, I'm not really too sure if he plays. I think he's leaning towards playing i think that's kind of what i've seen but we'll see if he does if he does in my opinion it will be a problem because he's still second on the team in like terms of receiving yards i think he's second on the team in receptions he's still a very he's not as effective as he was in um las vegas and oakland with the raiders but i think he's still an effective player and i think he's someone who could really make the saints cringe if i'm he's someone that's going to make the saints regret not game planning for him more is how i should put it in a good way if the saints want to prevent darren waller from being a weapon they have to be able to put pressure on tommy devito the giants offensive line in my opinion is the worst in the nfl they've allowed 69 sacks nice which is the most in the nfl 11 more than the next team yeah Tommy DeVito has been sacked 20 times in the last three, four games. Yeah, four games. Last week, however, was the first time he wasn't sacked. But if you look at it, since he took over in that Raiders game when the Giants played the Raiders, he's been sacked 26 times in four and a half, five games. This offensive line is bad. And Evan Neal, I believe, is a starter. And if he's not playing, that's bad for them. I don't know if Pew's a starter, but obviously offensive line depth matters and if he's not playing that's a pretty big hit this, this is another week where the saints are lucky to just play the panthers had four sacks looked good now they're only tied for third last in the nfl in sacks but this is a game where the saints need to take an opportunity to get pressure on a young rookie quarterback i'd have the same kind of game plan as you did last week against bryce young they blitz 20 times which is the most that they've blitzed all season Force Tommy DeVito to make a mistake because he hasn't made many. He's only thrown uh, one interception, I believe. Yeah, one interception since becoming the starter. That was against the Dallas Cowboys. He hasn't turned the ball over in this three-game win streak in terms of interceptions. He did fumble the ball against the New England Patriots. And I know I just said he wasn't sacked last week against Green Bay. He wasn't. Green Bay has a really solid front group, in my opinion. They have Gary and <clears throat> Preston Smith and Kenny Clark. So to not be sacked against them is impressive. And I think if Green Bay couldn't get a sack, how can the Saints get a sack without using blitzes and generating pressure and designing blitzes? Because the front forward, Cam Jordan's going to be a rotational player once again. Brian Brzee better have a good game. I think he should have a good game. Carl Granderson might have a pretty solid game, but a lot of these guys are not starting caliber players. They'd be the second string guys, or the they would be the rotational guy on the other 31 NFL teams. So if the Saints want to prevent Darren Waller to, from having a big game, and, and if they want to force Tommy DeVito to have mistakes, throw picks, steal possession, they're going to have to generate pressure. And DA needs to start blitzing more, force a young quarterback to make a mistakes. If that young quarterback, Tommy DeVito, feels pressure, feels bodies around him, feels like he has to make a play, and he throws it up, you have one of the best secondaries in the NFL. So take advantage of that, create some pressure, and allow your guys to make a play. Let's flip things over to the Giants' defense versus the Saints' offense. The Giants' defense is 8th in points per game allowed with 24.2. 8th as in the 8th worst. But over the last 3 games, they've allowed 16 points per game. So on their win streak, they've kind of stepped it up a little bit. And a huge part of that has been their front 7. Now the front 7 is solid. I wouldn't say it's elite because they have the same amount of sacks as the Saints. But what they do very good 
And while they can't get a lot of sacks, they generate a lot of pressure. But over these last three weeks, they have eight sacks, three coming from Kayvon Thibodeau, who has 11 and a half on the year. So Ryan Ramchuk is questionable. And you have Andres Pete on the left side, who's been shaky. He's been solid at left tackle, I'll say. But if Ramchuk isn't playing, and then you have Andres Pete, Kayvon Thibodeau might have himself another solid week because, I mean, three sacks in three weeks, eight sacks in three weeks, that's been solid for the Giants. And they also have Dexter Lawrence in the middle, Cesar Ruiz and James Hurst, who have not been the very solid players this season. It's going to be difficult for the Saints to block. And the Giants blitz a lot. And while it's been better over the past three weeks, I know I said they're tied with the Saints, so you would think maybe not so scary, but no. They blitz a lot. They're, they actually blitz the second most in the NFL, right behind the Vikings. They blitz 41.6% of time. And while these blitzes don't result in sacks, like I said, they generate pressure, and pressure creates turnovers. They are tied with the Saints in takeaways, which is the third best in the NFL with 22. They have 14 interceptions and 8 fumbles. Eight of those 14 interceptions have come off of those blitzes and pressure packages. The pressure the Giants generate in blitz forces turnovers, forces the quarterback to make mistakes. And Derek Carr is not good under pressure. He's not good when he's blitzed. Former teammates, when the Saints played the Lions, the guy who injured Derek Carr in that game said himself, when I was on the Raiders, all you have to do is kind of get bodies around him and he panics. The Jaguars, I believe, said something similar to all you have to do is get around him and force him to feel pressure and he'll make a mistake. Once he's pressured and feels blitzes and feels like there's someone near him, he rushes throws, he goes downfield inaccurately, he just isn't a good quarterback. And when he's blitzed, he's completed 70, 64% of his passes, has 1,034 yards, Six touchdowns and 30 interception has taken 14 sacks. Now, when he's pressured, that 64% completion percentage goes down to about 48%. Yeah, not, not too good. When he isn't blitzed, he has 67 completion percentage, 1,800 yards, seven touchdowns, and four picks. So he has one more touchdown and one more pick in 11 sacks so three less sacks but Derek Carr in general is not a good football player not a good quarterback when it comes to handling pressure handling blitzes and the Saints offensive line also hasn't been good this season at terms of winning their one-on-ones handling blitz packages and giving Derek Carr time now they have been better I think as of recently but they just had a pretty rough game against the Panthers where they let a guy come immediately through untouched and if he had been blocked for a second like just a simple push, Carr would have had Alvin Kamara for a touchdown. So Derek Carr is not good under pressure, but the Saints offensive line also is not very good when it comes to handling pressure, winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups. And if you go back to that Vikings game, Derek Carr did not look too good in that game either. He, yeah, they were able to go downfield and get into field goal range, but they weren't able to execute. They couldn't finish drives. They couldn't really do too much. Carr just did not see the field the way it needed to be seen. He was rushing throws. He just didn't look good against the Vikings. But when they did play the Vikings, they were able to find rhythm in the running game. And ever since that, the running game has been somewhat effective in my opinion. And this is a week they should be able to find success in the running game as well. The Giants' run defense is very, 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 very bad. They've allowed the fourth most yards in the NFL. They're tied for the second most touchdowns allowed in the running game at 19. They've allowed 4.8 yards per carry, which is the second worst. And in terms of yards per game, they're the fourth worst at 135.1 yards per game. A lot of this, in my opinion, has to do with the way the Giants blitz, the Vikings blitz, and the Saints were able to find success in the running game early on, but had to abandon it due to just getting down so early. This has to be the Alvin Kamara game sprinkled in with some Jamal Williams and Taysom Hill if they play. Possibly James Robinson if he ends up playing. I don't know if he does since he was just signed earlier this week. <clears throat> but this has to be the Jamal Williams, Taysom Hill, Alvin Kamara show. The running game has to be the game plan for the Saints. They haven't had too much 
success overall on the season when it comes to running the football. But as of recently, I think they've done a better job. I thought they were looking somewhat decent last week, but they just abandoned it because I don't know why they did. But I thought the running game looked better last week, and they just got abandoned it before they probably should have. The Saints right now are out Michael Thomas. They might be out Chris Olave. Carr's been injured, and you could tell last week that he was injured. Rashid Shahid is coming off a two-week injury. You need to rely on Alvin Kamara in that backfield. I know Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams are dealing with injuries, so that's why I said you got to sprinkle them in a little bit. Get creative with it. Do some um, sweeps with Lynn Bowden. Those have worked somewhat decently this season. Maybe do a trick play or something like that. But... Shahid's coming off an injury. You're out, Thomas. You might be out, Olave. Keith Kirkwood, A.T. Perry, and Marquez Callaway are going to be starting in this game. Rely on the running game. The Giants have one of the worst rushing defenses in the NFL. So, attack it. The Saints have not really attacked a defense's weakness all season aside from that Colts game. They need to attack and attack and attack until there's just no life left in the Giants. You could tell in that Colts game, the Saints attacked the Colts' weakness so bad that they had to work out nine defensive backs the next day. Attack this Giants' run defense. Attack it. And still, despite the Giants having the 18th best pass defense, they still need to run the football a lot. Like They better have 30 carries in this game. As for the Giants passing defense, they are 18th ranked. A lot of that is due to yak yards allowed. They miss a lot of tackles. They're not good in open space tackling. But lucky for them, the Saints don't do really that well in terms of getting guys opportunities to get yards after the catch or getting guys into open space. And again, it'll be hard to do this without Olave because despite the recent struggles of Derek Carr and Chris Olave's connection, Chris Olave still had success in terms of maybe getting yards after the catch. Rashid Shahid has not really been a yards after the catch guy this season because they're not utilizing him right. The quarterback's not getting him the football. Kamara has been somewhat of a decent yards after the catch guy, but they don't do a good job of getting him into open space. So for the Giants, they might be lucky because they're playing an offense that doesn't scheme guys open to create plays with their legs. They just create pl- scheme and create plays to... Get the ball to the check down. So, and that's for the Giants when it comes to covering running backs in the passing game. Because in the passing game, you would think, oh, maybe get the ball to Alvin Kamara. They missed a lot of open field tackles, a lot of yak yards allowed. When it comes to covering running backs, the Giants are have allowed 46 receptions, top three in the NFL. 59 targets, best in the NFL. 345 yards fifth least amount of yards in the nfl one touchdown allowed second best they do a good job covering running backs out of the backfield alvin Kamara, obviously one of the better receiving backs in the nfl so it'll be challenging the saints have not really found a way to get alvin Kamara involved in the passing game successfully they've gotten him involved but not involved successfully and i don't expect that to change this week either why are they going to change the way they attack the field and attack defenses 15 weeks or 14 weeks into a season in my opinion it's just not going to change the saints are who they are offensively and they don't scheme guys open to create plays and get separation and make plays in the open field not only are the giants good at covering running backs they're also pretty solid at covering tight ends as well but look but i mean it's not like it matters because the saints don't know how to use their tight ends anyway they don't know how to scheme plays for them and they don't know how to get them the football Derek Carr and Pete Carmichael but the Giants have allowed 47 receptions which is the third best on 77 targets 545 yards which is the 10th best two touchdowns allowed which is the third best so very good at stopping running backs very good at stopping tight ends when it comes to the passing game wide receivers I think their secondary has been better over the past few weeks uh, what's the Deontay Banks, I believe is the rookie corner him against Rashid Shahid. If Chris Olave is out, will be an interesting matchup and the saints won't be really able to attack the secondary in my opinion, because they just don't have the players to do so. Yeah. You have Rashid Shahid and maybe Chris Olave. If he plays and if he does play, he'll probably be limited on a snap count due to that ankle injury, which, uh, was confirmed by Dennis Allen that he suffered on that touchdown catch last week. So 
Marcos Callaway, A.T. Perry, Keith Kirkwood, those guys aren't going to, Lynn Bowden, these guys aren't going to beat the Giants secondary. The tight ends haven't been used all season. Giants are good against the tight end position and coverage. Same with running backs. So again, everything is pointing towards the Saints need to use the running game in this game. Have 30 carries. Get Kamara the ball. Get Lynn Bowden in the backfield. He's someone who can take carries as well. Just get creative with it. Don't rely on Kamara to do everything out of the backfield. Get everyone else involved as well. And yeah, control the clock. Run the football. Try and be effective with it. And if you can't run the football, you're in big trouble because Card couldn't get anything going with Thomas, Shahid, Olave, Kamara, Juwan. So how's he going to do that with two of his best wide receivers out? I just don't see how it works out. And a huge reason why the Giants have so much success covering these positions is players like Bobby Okereke, Xavier McKinney, Micah McFadden, and Jason Pinnock. Those guys, two linebackers, two safeties, those guys have been on top of it. Those guys have been very good when it comes to covering these tight ends and running backs. And they just make it hard for players and teams to have success with their skill positions from the tight end and running back group. They also have success defending the end zone through the air. They allowed a lot of yards, yards after the catch, whatever it may be, but they've only allowed 15 passing touchdowns on the season, which is the second best in the NFL. So once again, just like it's been all season, the Saints, once they get in the red zone, take the ball out of Derek Carr's hands. No, no, no. During this whole game, take the ball out of Derek Carr's hands because the Giants run defense isn't it. This is a game where you wish you had Kendry Miller and you could just run the ball down the throats of the Giants. Take the ball to Derek Carr's hands, though, when you get to the red zone. Give it to AK. Give it to Taysom. I don't care. Do screens. Don't let Derek Carr attack the end zone because the Giants have had one of the better pass defenses when it comes to defending the pass defense in the red zone. Now, the Giants also have um, the 10th worst red zone defense in the NFL, so it's not like they're playing at an elite level in the red zone. They're still not the bottom 10 red zone defense, and luckily for the Saints... This is the third week in a row they're playing a bottom 10 red zone defense. And Carr has looked better in the red zone recently, but he is who he is. Nine, 10 years into his career, he's a bad red zone quarterback. So rely on Camaro, rely on Taysom, especially in the red zone. Take the ball out of Derek Carr's hands, and chances are you, you will probably have success. And if the Saints want to have success, and if they're going to win this game, here would be my keys to victory. Rely on the running game. We talked about it basically this whole damn video. Rely on it and rely on it and rely on it and continue to do it. Because what we've seen from the Saints the past few weeks, especially last week, they start getting a running game going and then they go away from it. They had 99 rushing yards last week. I'm pretty sure like 60 of them came in the first half. Jamal Williams looked pretty solid. Alvin Kamara looked like Alvin Kamara. That's without Taysom Hill. If you can get James Robinson involved, maybe this is a week you can get him involved a little bit if he knows the playbook. Just take Kamara or Jamal off the field for a breather. Get Taysom Hill involved. Run the ball. Don't go away from it and continue to do it. Number two, win the turnover battle. The Saints lose games when they can't create turnovers. So if they want to win this game, they have to win the turnover battle. Tommy DeVito has one interception as a starter, zero in the last three. You want to force a turnover, force a fumble, force a pick? Get some pressure. Send some blitzes. Rely on your secondary guys to make plays against a wide receiver group that isn't too talented. Blitz. Create turnovers. And offensively, don't turn the ball over. Just run the football. Derek Carr. The Giants are going to be blitzing, and if they're blitzing... I'm going to full-on believe he's going to throw a pick. He's just not good when it comes to handling pressure. Or handling not even pressure, just if he feels like there's someone near him, he doesn't do a very good job dealing with it. And the final one, stop the run. <laughs> stop Saquon Barkley from running all over your defense. He needs to be the priority. He needs to be stopped. It, it's as simple as this. Get Alvin Kamara involved. Don't allow Saquon Barkley to get involved. But I don't expect that to happen. I don't expect Saquon Barkley to be stopped. The Saints have not been able to stop the run all season. Brian Dable probably knows this. 
And I don't see why he wouldn't just use Saquon Barkley and Tommy DeVito's legs to beat the Saints. I don't expect him to go away from it either. I think he'll get Wando Robinson involved pretty creatively and uniquely as well. So those are my keys to victory for the Saints. And my predictions, uh, bold prediction, I think the Saints get a pick six. I think the Saints create pressure, get a pick six. I don't know who it will be, but I think they take a possession away and end up scoring on that interception. For my score predictions, I think Dennis Allen gets outcoached by Brian Dable, displays why he should be canned, and they lose 23-21 to Giants win and... And then you have a short week heading to LA. I appreciate it if you made it this far. Make sure while you're here, you hit that subscribe button and check me on social media. Links are in the description. And let me know what your thoughts are about this game. Do you believe the Saints win? Who do you got winning? Anything like that. I appreciate it if you made it this far. And I will see you all Sunday after the game.